This was one of Nike's first television ad in 1988 with the slogan Just Do It. The ad featured 80 year old voice stack slowly jogging through the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. I run 17 miles every morning. People ask me how I keep my teeth from chattering in the wintertime. I leave them in my locker. In this advertisement, the word Nike appears only once at the end and Walt Disney doesn't talk about shoe or company at all. So what is so special? Stories like Walt evoke an immediate emotional response in viewer and lead them to ask if they can do it, why cannot I? And these emotions are transferred to the audience by Just Do It tagline. Just Do It, the iconic slogan for Nike is now intrinsic to the brand. The famous Just Do It line has a surprisingly dark origin story. It was inspired by the final word of a death row inmate was facing execution and said, let's do it. But before we dare debug, let us look at the brief history of the brand and reason for the tagline, just do it. Nike is one of the most successful brands in athletics and sportswear apparel worldwide right now. Like humans, brands also need identity. Its need to define its existence, what are its value, what resides in its center. In Greek mythology, Nike is a winged goddess of victory. Its logo derived from goddess wing shush, which symbolized the sound of a speed, movement, power and motivation. The idea of Nike began way back in the 1950s. A track coach named Bill Bowerman at the University of Oregon was seeking competitive advantage for his athletes. Phil Light, a track and field athlete, enrolled at Oregon in 1955. Phil was on Bill's track team. Phil graduated from Oregon and earned his MBA from Stanford University. He went on to publish a paper describing how high qualities of shoes may be manufactured in Japan at lower cost. He contacted a firm in Japan and became a distributor of Tiger shoes in the United States of America. Phil sent some pair of shoes to his former track course in the hopes that Bill would buy them. Instead of purchasing those shoes, Bill proposed a collaboration to develop better running shoes and thus how Blue Ribbon Sports was founded by Phil Knight and Bill Overman in 1964. The company's first move was to order 300 pairs of shoes from a company in Japan. This became the foundation of Nike. In 1978, Blue River Sports officially changed its name to Nike Incorporation. In 1980, Nike surpassed Adidas as the best-selling sports gear company in the United States. It has sponsored athletes ranging from sprinter Carl Lewis to basketball legend Michael Jordan. However, sales failed in 1987 and 1988 and Nike lost a market share to Reebok, a company that profited on the late 1980s aerobics and fitness fad. Fast forward to 1988, Dan Whedon had a campaign to develop. Dan Whedon is one of the founders of Whedon and Kennedy Advertising Agency. He was working on creating a commercial that he could propose to Phil Knight, the founder and CEO of Nike. Whedon was concerned about lack of unified concept. He needed a catchphrase. While brainstorming the slogan, Whedon referenced about Gary Gilmore's last words, let's do it. But who was Gary Gilmore? Gary Gilmore was a person who killed two people in Utah in 1976 and was asked if he had any final words before facing the firing squad. He replied, let's do it. The story of Gilmore has been long forgotten by most, but his final words live in a manner that no one would have imagined. We didn't draw inspiration for the tagline from the Gary Gilmore famous dying word, let's do it, while on a death row. He, he was convicted and, um, and sentenced to die by firing squad. And so, which is a little old fashioned, but they, uh, so they brought him out, put him in the chair, and before they put, and the firing squad was there, and before they put the um, sack over his head, they asked him if he had any last words, and he said, you know, let's do it. And I was, I remember when I read that, I was like, that's amazing. I mean, how do you, in face of that much uncertainty, do you, do you push through that, you know? And uh, so I, I didn't like the let's thing, I just changed that. And... Nike co-founder Phil Knight, who was skeptical about the need of advertising, initially rejected the idea. We didn't really believe in the slogan and persuaded him to believe on this one and it went big really quickly. The tagline was first used in 1988, Nike ad featuring Walter Stack, an 80-year-old runner. 
Sales of the brand skyrocketed as a result. Both the tagline and Nike Swiss emblem added the brand in overtaking then rival Reebok and transforming into global behemoth as we know today. As a consequence of Just Do It campaign, people began to approach Nike with personal tales about how they just did it, whether it was quitting their dead end careers or adopting a healthier lifestyle. Just do it. Let's make it seem like anyone can do this, you know. It kind of kicked me in the pants to, you know. <laughs> get, you know, rejuvenated with my career. Just do it. Do what you want. I was a senior in high school and it actually gave me courage to ask this girl out to the prom that I wanted to ask and it worked. That is, as they say, is history. Nike is still using the term a lot of their branding and marketing today. Words have a lot of power. Their significance crystallizes perception, form our ideas, motivate our action and in the end determine our reality. Our emotional responses when we read, say or hear give them forces. We listen to or say many things in our everyday life to justify our conversation. Certain phrases stick with us while others go away with time. Because of human psychology, no one can remember everything. But if I say connecting people or think different, your mind may immediately recognize Nokia or Apple. Nike reacted quickly and decisively by developing the Just Do It campaign which focused on people who wore their items rather than the product themselves. Since then, Nike has solidified its position as a world-leading sports brand and create awareness of it as an authentic and inventive brand. Just do it. Moved away from the field of physical fitness into consumer daily lives, tapping into the fitness craze of 1980s. Its goal was to encourage procrastinating people to take action in doing the things that they should be doing for their health. The multifaceted slogan became a lifestyle mantra accessible by all. Due to its uniqueness, it became one of the most successful ad in history. Many found it motivating to push themselves beyond their personal limit, while others found it inspiring to overcome any obstacles that they face. On the surface, the slogan appeared to apply to fitness and exercise, but most tweaked and transformed it to suit their personal goals. It is still astounding to think how three little words could transcend all cultural, social, psychological and demographic difference around the world. As a result of universal resonance, Nike brand image showed. The brilliant element, of course, is that the campaign's subliminal message implies that you can attain same degree of glory or success as is athletes if you wear Nike shoes or clothes. Products have evolved beyond their functional meanings. They are unquestionably social tools these days, functioning as a form of communication between individuals and its significant references. Products are a symbol of uniqueness and originality as well as affinity and social identity.